Hi guys, in this video I want to continue looking at the used cars data and in the previous one, uh, you, you should have definitely watched before you watch this one, we looked at some of these variables kind of one at a time, univariately. So we looked at transmission and we looked at mileage and we learned a bunch of tools that we can use to explore the, explore the data one variable at a time. Okay, this was a categorical variable and this was a numerical variable. So there were different things we could do for, for both of these, right? So we learned some of those. Now in this video, I want to focus on um, the relationship between some of these variables or features. When I say variable, this is the same as feature, right? So excuse me, uh, coming from a statistical background, I say variable. Um, but machine learning, we use the word feature, no big deal. So I want to see the relationship between some of these features. And so uh, I'm going to focus on one or two of them. Maybe we'll focus on uh, price as well. OK, price is also a number. All right. But first, since we paid, uh, spent time learning about mileage and transmission alone, let's see what's the relationship between these two. So first, uh, maybe a nice plot would be nice. Uh, um, so we have one numerical variable, one categorical variable. A nice way to kind of get a visual on this is a side-by-side -side box plot. So basically a box plot is used with a numerical variable, right? But how but we can then slice that numerical variable, which is mileage, right? By the levels of the categorical variable transmission. In other words, I want to say, hey, I know about mileage overall. Can I just focus on the mileages for automatic cars only and then compare that to the mileage of the manual cars, which is in this data as well, and compare those two instead of just talking about mileage like I did last video? So a side-by-side -side box plot, which showed me the, a box plot of mileage, but two of them, one for automatic mileage, one for manual mileage and so the transmission variable is the one that will split mileage into those two parts okay so here it's y this squiggly line x so y and x refer to the y-axis and the x-axis so this variable is going to go on the y this variable is going on the x this is the way I tell the plot function to um, plot okay I also need to include the name of the data frame that these two variables are coming from because these two variables don't sit alone on their own, right? They're connected to this data frame called that we named DF. Okay, so second argument, comma, data equals DF. Hit enter, and we get this nice side by side box plot. Uh, why did I squeeze it? All right, and already from this box plot, it looks like. Um, automatic cars here so here's the x-axis right there's transmission here's the y-axis here's mileage right it looks like the automatic cars are a little more spread out than manual cars right look got a lot of extreme values here uh, besides that it looks like the centers of the two are pretty similar to each other right but uh, the tails definitely of the automatic car seems to be much more skewed to the right than manual cars. Okay, so we're learning something about the relationship between these two. Uh, another nice thing would be if we could actually get the numbers for, for these summary statistics. So maybe like I want to know the mean mileage for automatic cars and the mean mileage for manual cars. So how do I do that? Well, there's this really useful, powerful function called tapply, <clears throat> which does, among other things, exactly what we need to do here. So let's just focus on this. We want to get the, uh, we want to do something to mileage, all right? And we want to split it <coughs> on levels of transmission. And the, what we want to do is get the mean. So here's the numerical variable we want to do something to. Here's the categorical variable that we want to kind of split this up into and here's the function that we want to apply to those two splits and then in this case it's going to be automatic and manual all right hit enter and you see it tells us that the mean mileage for an automatic car 
is 44,000 miles, 44,300, and a manual car is 44 flat. That's pretty close to each other. So what we learned so far is that um, the mileage doesn't uh, the, the the average mileage is not too different between the transmission types. Okay, how about the spread though? It's possible for two things to have the same center but have a quite different spread. So I hit the arrow up on the keyboard. I uh, just want to change the last argument in this function to standard deviation. So we've seen mean and we've seen standard deviation. Now they're getting used inside another function. So hit enter. I see that automatic cars uh, tend to be more spread out than manual cars as far as their mileage. Right? Look, tw almost 28,000 miles standard deviation and uh, 21 and a half for manual. So automatic cars are more variable, at least in this data set, um, as far as mileage. Okay, so that kind of corroborates with our, our box plot here, right? Because I said it looks like this box plot's more spread out, the auto one. And the standard deviation is also higher than the manual. So this stuff starting to corroborate, okay? All right, um, we can also kind of uh, add some color to this, spruce this up. We'll leave those details to kind of maybe I'll one day do a separate video just focusing on like kind of putting titles on these and putting colors. You could you could mess with the order, uh, and there's other things you could do as well. For now, let's now turn our focus to another pair of variables we want to compare. So right now we just learned a couple tools to compare a numerical to a versus to a categorical. Okay. How about a numerical to a numerical? Okay. So a different set of tools. So let's do price and mileage. Let's see how these two are related to each other. Right, we're kind of exploring the data at this phase. We started just looking one at a time, one at a time, one variable at a time, one feature at a time, snippets. Now we're graduating to looking at pairs. Right? How does how does this variable feature uh, relate to that feature? Do they kind of relate to each other? Can I learn about one from the other one, and so on? Okay. But within that, we have different kinds of features. So we have to have different tools for dealing with different types of comparisons. So numerical to categorical, we just did here. And this was a good graph for that. How about now numerical to numerical? Okay, so let me just clear the screen and clear the, clear our palette. <clears throat> so let's look at the data again. Remember, head just shows us the first six, so this is not the entire data set. Um, let's Let's learn a little bit about price before we start comparing it to anything. What's the mean price? Uh huh. Okay, what's the median price? Uh huh. So the mean is slightly less than the median. Mm, that hints to me that maybe it's a less skewed distribution. What's the spread look like? Okay, there's. Uh, I have some idea. But a histogram would be nice at this point and a box plot. Ah, uh, look at that histogram. So it looks left skewed a little bit, huh? And that agrees with kind of what we learned here, but this is enough to kind of satisfy us. Look, a little bit of a, a longer left tail. So, um, how about a box plot? This should tell us the same story in a slightly different light. Yeah, look at that. We have some extreme values on both tails, the right tail up here. Right? Maybe I should. Horizontal equals true. Yeah. So I just flipped it. So look, we have we have extreme values here, about the same amount. The tails look not too different, but within the center of the data, there is a definite shift towards the left. Right. Twenty-five percent of the data is here. Twenty-five is here. All right. This, remember, this is the median, this is Q1, this is Q3. So this is the middle 50% of the data. And in the middle, there is 
uh, skew towards the left. Okay, more of that. There's more. It's more spread out here than it is here. This is more stacked up. All right, and let's go quickly back to the histogram so you can see this. This is a review of some intro stat stuff. So look, th this being the middle of the data, you see it's definitely left skewed it at the middle. It's got a longer tail here, but the box plot's telling us that at the at the extreme ends, it's kind of symmetric. Either way, we understand a little bit more about price, but what we really wanted to focus on in this video is to comp is to relate um, price and mileage to see how they relate. You would expect as mileage increased, the price of a used car would decrease. That's one of the first things that I would look for in buying a used car. Okay, so uh, we can make a plot. So we use the plot command again. Y versus uh, um, Y squiggly x right so here let's put price on the y-axis and mileage on the x you could have flipped it doesn't matter the relationship would come out data I have to tell it is coming from the DF data frame hit enter and this is with all the defaults I see a nice scatter plot here look here's my y-axis here's my x-axis right y x here this is a number this is a number so I get a scatter plot when I use when I did plot with a num numerical variable and a categorical variable it made side-by-side -side box plots that's what we saw earlier in this video number with number scatter plot and this scatter plot is nice because look it's, it's a clear story here it's exactly what we expected as mileage increases what happens to price? It decreases on average, right? Of course, there's a lot of randomness also, right? Because there's a lot of other things going on. But overall, there's a clear pattern here that's negative, okay? What you would probably expect. And finally, I'd like to maybe uh, show where this could go um, very quickly. We're looking at the scatter plot. So we've kind of rounded out our discussion of exploring data uh, bivariately, two variables at a time, uh, a numerical with a categorical, a numerical with a numerical. That's what we're looking at right now. Let's just spruce this up a little bit. Wouldn't it be nice to now add a third variable here and layer even more information on here? There's a real creative way to do this, and I think you can kind of bring your own creativity to this. At this point, I'm looking at price and mileage. That's giving me an idea of price and mileage and how they're related to each other. We also were talking about transmission. How can I incorporate transmission information in here? Transmission, if I could spell it, right? Maybe I can use different symbols for these dots that, rep remember, each one of these dots represents one of the examples from our data set. So maybe I could use a different symbol for automatic cars for, compared to um, manual cars. And that will, maybe I could see some patterns there. So how can we do that? Well, going back to our plot command, let's so this is kind of bonus extra stuff right so we could do um, PCH which is the which is the argument that controls the character uh, sorry the kind of the character or, or symbol of the the points right by default it's set at level one so if I just do one you'll see nothing changed I want to set this to be connected to transmission, but unfortunately I need to be a little bit more clever. I need to do it like this. So you could just copy this code, not worry too much about it. But basically we're telling it here, connect the symbols to the variable transmission. Okay, now let's go back. Look, triangles. You see those triangles in there? And circles. So the triangles are either auto or manual and the circles are the other one so we've basically layered some more information on it it would be nice to know 
if the triangles were the autos or the manuals, and we could do that as well to have like a little legend up here. But you see now we're starting to pack on information. So let's also maybe add color. Let's do color equals uh, as dot integer. We'll do the same thing. We'll base it off transmission. Okay, that's not so pretty. Can we do as dot transmission plus three? Yay, we got some nice colors here. Okay, so again, this is kind of to show you what where we can go with this stuff. All right. <coughs> Let's add a legend. So we want to put the legend in the top right because that seems to be where we have some empty space, right? And the legend should include terms for automatic. I know that's the first level and manual because we made this factor in a couple videos ago and we uh, remember when it's alphabetically orders the level so auto would come before manual and the symbols are going to just be one and two so you can just kind of gloss over this code that I'm using here uh, not pay too much attention to it um, just look at the results and if you like it's all here for you to kind of replicate okay boom uh, my colors are off what did I do here plus three plus four would mean I think two uh, sorry four maybe five yeah there we go okay so look at our scatter plot. We we'll make this bigger and let's close out on this. Let's look at the. So not only now do we know that as price increases, uh, sorry, as mileage increases, price tends to decrease. But we know that looking at these triangles, that the manual cars are a lot fewer. These colors aren't the greatest. They don't pop out a lot fewer than the automatic cars that's something you can see right into the data right uh, and also at this point we see there's no major difference between manual cars and the triangles basically and the circles as far as mileage and price are concerned they seem to both behave the same way they de as mileage increases price decreases no matter if your car is manual or automatic Sometimes what you could see is that when you put the, this extra layer of information on, that let's say manual cars maybe drop price even faster than automatic cars, right? As mileage increases. In this case, we didn't really see something like that. But there's there's tons of information that you can kind of uh, extract by using scatter plots and then layering these kind of symbols on top of them. Okay, I definitely went over my time, but I wanted to give you kind of something more visual and something maybe to look forward to and show you some of the capabilities. All right, so uh, till next time, have a great day.